Brooklyn. Welcome back, champ. Welcome back to Brooklyn, champ. You said you want Sean Porter. Is Sean Porter better today or he's better in 2016? 15. 16, 15. You know, he looked, he looked a little, uh, a little, a little whack against Danny in last season. You know, he did what he needed to do, but his defense was, was worse than it was against my fight. I think he took a lot of blows that he didn't need to take. And, you know, obviously, I think a lot of people, when they fight Keith Thurman, they know they should do one thing, keep their hands up, you know? Uh, so, obviously, when the fight happens again, if it happens again, you gotta get through Ugas and things of that nature. If it happens again, I expect him to watch tape, you know, do his thing and do what he did. There, I did not think of a lot of left hooks against Sean Porter in the fight. Um, Danny Garcia, I don't know if you guys ever seen him keep that right hand up so, so dang good when he fought me too, you know? So that's why we had, even though we had bone spurs in the fight, even though we had bone spurs, I, I saw that hand up, so I had to deal with the right hand, you know what I mean? I mean, we got, we got two hands to fight with, baby. So I'm trying to do things from all angles. Champ. You know what I'm saying? I'm a super baby, I'm a super champ. <laughs> I'm a super champ. I need an S. I'm a super champ. I'm a super champ. You feel me? I mean, it is what it is, man. You know, I, I love Mr. Pacquiao. I love everything that he's done and brought into the sport of boxing. You know, I mean, he brought a whole new nation into boxing, baby. Them Filipinos weren't watching boxing before Mr. Pacquiao. You know what I mean? Uh, they're closer to Thailand, all that boy Thai fighting and all that different stuff going on down there, man. So, you know, it's just beautiful. Uh, Nick Pacquiao has a tremendous heart, you know, and he gives back to his country. And, you know, I'm a different kind of guy, but Nick Pacquiao is also a different kind of guy. And it's great to see all sorts of different uh, world-class fighters with different personalities, man. You know, so like I said, you know, no matter whatever happens, the man in his career, if I get to put these hands on my top, you know, I'm always gonna have respect for the man. Just this one is. You guys are around the same schedule. We fall last weekend, you fight this weekend. Yeah, make you salivate at the mouth, like that's the yeah. PBC now. I mean, I mean, I know he be praying, but I'm praying too. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm praying too. <laughs> Terrence Crawford, Amir Khan. I know you was kind of skeptical of Terrence Crawford's resume at 47. How do you like that? How do you like that? That fight? I'm the one who you made that fight. I right? made the fight. Yeah. I made the same thing earlier this year. I was there. Terrence Crawford, he ain't done. I mean, he ain't even fought. And Amir Khan. And here comes the contract. Do I get 5%? I, I think I deserve 5%. Look. I'll relay the message. I mean, this, this is a beautiful time to be a boxer. ESPN throwing out the money. Fox throwing out the money. Showtime and HBO, they still throwing out the money. You feel me? So, I mean, you got the zone. I don't know much about them, but they throwing out the money. There's a lot out there in the world of boxing today. Not just for us fighters, for you fans. I mean, for the, for the contenders, for everybody, man. I mean, boxing's a beautiful sport. And we ain't going nowhere. We're growing. Only getting stronger. Only getting bigger. Does he have to beat Khan convincingly? If it goes to decision, is he still, are you still skeptical of him at 47? You know, style makes fights, you know. Um, of course, we're going to want him to dominate the best he can dominate, whether that means Drop him one time, drop him three times, or, or just outbox a boxer. You know, 
as an undefeated world champion, we obviously expect him to win, you know? And if he wants to get my respect, he's gonna have to, he's gonna have to do something in that ring, you know? Uh, and, and I respect everything that he's doing. He's got a great contract over there with ESPN. I think this is a great fight for him at 147. I still think there's more dangerous fighters for him to get in the ring up against, but we're still in our prize, we're still young enough, we don't have to rush into it, so I applaud him for, for, for strategically attacking the welterweight division, I mean, because he became champion off Jeff Horn, and in the first place, you know? So it just is what it is, man. You know, we're gonna see what happens. I see the fight with those You know, uh, and now all the fights, over at uh, over at Fox, I had an opportunity. I was here, Mikey was here, and Errol was here, and I, I just looked, and it looked like his face lines up with his right hook. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. You know, and you know, I'm not gonna be surprised that right hook catches him. Um, you know, shoot, Mikey, Mikey could fight um, a Terrence Crawford. That's a more winnable fight for Mikey, I believe, than Errol Spence Jr. I just think Errol's too big, too strong, and if you want to step into 147, you should step into it taking smaller bites instead of a big bite. You know, but hey, he's hungry. Once again, applaud him for, for making the challenge similar to Kel Brook fighting Triple G, right? Look, win, lose, or draw, he's going to get respect. He wins, he's going to become his own a uh, legend because of all of his credentials already. If he could just come in the walkway division and be like, I'm Mike Garcia, baby. I'm number one. You know what I'm saying? I'm, we all gonna have to be like, all right, Mikey, we see you. We see you, Mikey. But, I don't think so. Mikey said, Mike, so. Mike, Mike said he was for you out for Spence. Yeah, he was, but obviously, what is he gonna do? You know what I mean? What is he gonna do? <laughs> uh, I, I was all hurt. You want to kickbox? <laughs> you know, I mean, that's because when he came, Mikey wanted to not just not just hop into the division. He looking at the top, and I respect that hustling. You know what I'm saying? So he can have to show the world what he's made of. Uh, comes on 15, 16, whatever the date is. Did any depression come in? Huh? I'm making weight, baby. I'm hungry. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm hungry for the top, though. Oh, my God. He's back, man. He's back, Keith. First off, all that is foolishness. I'm a world class fighter. I worked my whole life to be here. I worked my whole life to see you, to see you, to see you. So, that's foolishness, baby. I ain't going nowhere. I belong at the top. I work my way at the top, and I'm always gonna be at the top. I stay humble when I say I'm one of the best. I'm one of the best. But of course, that fire, the fire is to be the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, three other three world champions. Wow. You can juggle it around and say who you believe is number one. I'm a smart individual, baby. I know what y'all thinking. I know what you're thinking. I ain't worried about it either. This is my job, not your job. This is my job. We going to work. Starting Saturday night. We going to work. This is <laughs> just a preview. You know, two times this year, Keith. One time. Yeah, two times. Two times. Third meeting or Pat Gallo's priority? What's that? Who's your priority for the second fight? Third meeting or Pat Gallo? Excuse me. Quarter, quarter on back now. Uh, hey, several contract is actually handed to me and looks the best. You know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. Yeah. I'm so glad he's back, man. Man, he brings so much energy. So much energy. So glad he's back. Well, like Bruce Lee said, he 
Said the best Walter White. He perked his head up. He's like, nah, nah, nah. And you in my hometown? Nah, nah, nah. nah. <laughs> Was there any depression that set in? You were off for two years. You got injuries. Fans are coming down on you. Boxers are coming down on you. How were you able to sustain your mindset? Whatever you say, don't depress me. Whatever you guys say, don't depress me. What depress me is that I don't get to do what I love to do. Won't that depress you? Amen. Right? Anger, you're right. If you want to be with your kids, if you can't be with your kids, you sad. You see what I'm saying? If you're looking for a raise and your boss don't give you a raise, you sad. You know what I mean? If I'm not in this ring, I'm sad. Preach. We first playing Earl of Series, we sad. Hey. When the moment's right, you know what I'm saying? We pull a chicken out of the oven before it's time to eat. When is the moment right? I'm just now getting back. I'm just now getting back. So you won't let me do me back. My husband out there. Y'all been talking about each other for years now. Unfortunately, it's got an S on it. Look. Say what you want to say. They will fight. We're not going to kill you eight years old, okay? Don't well, you worry about it. Like I said, whatever you say, that don't make you sad. We looking into the future. That's Saturday, Jose Lopez. What do you know about him? What do you know about this guy? Well, he knows everything about him. He's one of them kind of guys. He's a little bit. He's a little bit. Maybe his new coach stopped turning over punches. I'll find out real soon. I'll find out real soon. You know? But Jose Lopez is a game fighter, man. You know? We see him fight through 
a lot, you know? He doesn't always win, and he said that himself. He don't always win, but he's coming to win Saturday night, you know? and I gotta respect that. And I gotta do my job. Get that! So it is what it is, man. I'm looking forward to a good fight. No matter how many rounds it goes, I'm looking forward to a good fight. I'm hoping that we put on a good show. I'm, I'm moving right now, but you ain't gonna just see this. We in the, we in the fifth round right now. Fifth round. Fifteen minutes. That was my next question. Well, if you don't believe in Jesus, watch that man get up off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Ghost, something magical, lifted him up. You feel me? Look, Yahweh Wilder is a bad man. Now, I say a lot of things, and everything I say doesn't get heard by y'all. But I was debating this too with you, right? I said, let's be real now. Y'all came out fought that fight with zero technique. Zero technique. Now, I think it's because he, you know, he... You mean this motherfucker. I got what? I'm throwing this from Alabama! Y'all tell me, what's the record? 40 and 0. 39 KOs and one draw. 30, 39 40. KOs, right? 40. Yeah, 41 and 0, 40 KOs. He's not even worried about that draw line. 41 and 0, 40 KOs. And he won't fight with zero technique, right? But he's making it to the top. He's one of the most devastating. Does he deserve more credit or less credit? More. You tell me. More. You tell me. More. I don't care. You tell me. That's all. That's what I've been asking everybody in the gym after that fight. I said, yo, I, I, I think he deserves more credit than people in the gym. You know, of course. Camp after camp after camp. You know, I feel like he can work a little bit. <laughs> right. On uh, we got we got the right hand. I think we need to work on turning out that hook on. Fuck! You know, fuck! The left is the one that's down! The right set it up, though. Right. You know, and he had, and he had a real left. He went down, the guy can't pick him up. You know what I'm saying? But I love my big brother D, man. I love D. He's standing up. He's real good people, man. I think he's great right for the sport. You know, we got, we got all these Europe, European heavyweights, and it's been like that throughout history. Europeans versus America. And red, white, and blue, you already know your boy, red, white, and blue. We hold it down. You team Deontay all the way. But, uh, what's that, what, Anthony Joshua? You get knocked out, boy. You get knocked out, boy. Wow. Keith, you got a bomb squad in you? Huh? You got a bomb squad in you? Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. I got a place for D, I'm telling you, man. You know, good people, man. I think the boxing public has a place for you. Uh, look at the ring aprons, full of media. How satisfying is it for you? You've been out 22 months, and you have 40, minute, 40 to 50 media members around you, and we ain't seen you in two years. You know, it feels good, man. It feels better than good, it feels great. I'm really, really happy to be here. Like I said, I'm a humble individual. I know what it is. A lot of people don't know. Boxing is a poor man's sport. You know what I'm saying? That's right. That's right. It costs my mama five dollars a month for me to be a boxer. Five dollars a month. You feel me? There ain't a lot of gyms today that are gonna cost that. But I'm just saying. You know, at the end of the day, you want to play. You want to play uh, uh, football? You gotta buy the cleats. You gotta buy all the gear. This and that. You gotta sign up with your city, your county, your 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 uh, your high school team, your your middle school team, whatever. But you gotta come out of pocket, man. You show up to a boxing gym, they like, hey man, get yourself a mouthpiece and just show up tomorrow. You feel me? So 
I mean, I just, I just know where I come from. Ben Gay, I know where I come from, man. Yeah. You know, and so I'm always happy to be here. Uh, man, you know, uh, you know, in my prayers, man, you know, that, uh, it, that can happen, you know. A lot of people don't understand the indebtedness of why I brought myself one time, man. Just like I say, I'm looking for that one time, but one time can happen to me. You know what I'm saying? This is a real sport right here. You know? And y'all would look at the day, y'all see a daddy say, I got this day, y'all see a daddy was like, my boy done. He ain't boxing no more. He ain't boxing no more. Why? Because he's successful. He took care of his family. He's smart with his money. He got his own ball in mind. He don't need to take punches. The boy don't need to take punches. He already became a champion. He already going into history books. And that wasn't coming from a coach. That was coming from the father in him. You know what I'm saying? Nobody, nobody's family, even though they always support us in fighters, nobody's family wants to see us like that, man. Nobody wants to see us in that kind of pain. And even, even us fighters, I don't, I don't have the desire to hurt a man that bad. So I do want to hurt many men, but not that bad. You know what I'm saying? And if it ever happens, and I just really hope that it never happens to me. Because you want to move the box. Who don't you like at 147? You know, I mean, once again, fight the right fight at the right time. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, it's, it's been hard, man. It, has, it only takes one blow. It only takes one blow. Nobody knows. There's, there's, been, there's been others before him, and there's going to be others after him. And that's the devastating truth about the sport of boxing. We, 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 we're not going to put on 16 ounce gloves and give you a show. We're not going to do it. Who don't you like at 147? Is there anybody that just gets under your skin that you want? But he should know, because when I look a man in his eyes, I don't blink, baby. When I look a man in his eyes, I don't blink. So when I said you're going to get that, you're going to get that. Keith, not many guys can do this pattern. 95% of boxers at least don't do this pattern in between shadow boxing. It makes you maybe a little bit kind of special. Cutting that weight. What, not <laughs> most of the time? Yeah. Huh? Not, no, most guys don't do this. I will. Put a, put a spar button in the ring and then have a talk. I'll impress myself. This ain't that impressive, homie. This ain't that impressive. We helping you cut weight. <laughs> Any thoughts on Badu Jack? He big cut. Yeah, yeah. He is? Beautiful. I mean, that was I don't know that. Cut. Yes. You know what I mean? No, I know he's around, but I don't know. He never, he never and, and, and he was fought on. He's fought on. He's fought on. I don't know. He's gonna make weight, I know that. That's like a horror film, man. You know? So if he I don't I didn't catch yeah. what he said after the fight, this and that. So I mean if he wants a rematch, I really hope out of respect that that boy gets his rematch and uh and hopefully Hello. doesn't suffer another cut like that and just and yeah. do a better job at fighting his fight. My man, how many fights are we looking at this year? Two or three? What are you hoping to get? Yeah, I'll be out there in the spot. I don't like to make fights because I can't forget. You know what I mean? I told y'all, I'm humbled and I'm honored. You've heard me speak many times. I'm not going to lie to you. So, I'm going to throw up the number two. You mentioned Hearns and Leonard in the beginning. How would you have done against those guys? Have you ever imagined that? I don't know. But I would have put on a show. You've been listening to a lot of hip hop, Keith. You, you've been listening to a lot of hip hop. You rhyming a lot, man. I got what you call uh, interview bars. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
to the WBA strap for two years. Because I'm the super champ. <laughs> tell him, tell him, champ. Tell him. Tell him, champ. Tell him, champ. WBA? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Superman now. Uh, I'll be honest, man. Oh, you would keep Thurman. Yeah. yeah. We needed him. That's the main man of life. He's a lightning rod. We needed him. Big room. He's back, I can tell you that. I'm glad he's back. You know what I mean? I like to be, I was going out to the bus game, all these other sporting events. I'm not going to the spectrum. You know what I mean? But, if I play some football, I'll be there. If I play some basketball, I'll be there. You know what I mean? I'm not tired of wood, but if you want to go play golf, I'll be there. You just started playing golf. That's a bad motherfucker. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Man, it's hard to beat the Patriots, man. It's hard to beat them, man. How you doing, sir? Where do you think you're dropping out? You're staying in the best of the seven for the fourth national future? Um, yeah, you know, it's been my lifelong dream to make my legacy at 147. To be in the books next to Leonard Hearn, you know, Sugar Ray all these, all the, uh, uh, Kansas Stone, you know, I, I want Keith Thurman to be, you know, in that mix. 
you know? Uh, that's what I dreamed when I was coming up as a young amateur. I got a whole box of books in my trunk case at my mama's house. And I remember being 10 years old, flipping through that book, saying to myself, hoping one day to be you know what? They can go just like me. And when they put through the book, my picture will be inside. You know what I mean? Huh? So 147, man. You don't want nothing. Really? Yeah. 954, 917. You know, I can eat that ice cream and be there. Challenge. It's way different. Way different. And that's what we do at 147. Never seen him like that. Would you like me to get you some water? Huh? Would you like me to get you some water? I'm already drinking my sweat. Oh, okay.
on positive film right now. Saturday Night Fox, 300 million people are going to be able to watch for free. And where's the jump rope, coach? Where the free? Where the jump rope? Jump rope. Where the jump rope, coach? Put your best thing in it, you find your shot. I got mine. What the fuck is Were you shocked he stood up to those left hooks? Um, no. Like I said, we were the wrong partners. It's not like I can't say I ever dropped Sean Porter in my life, because I haven't. So it didn't really surprise me. Um, but when I look back at tape, there was more that got to him than just that. I snuck in a few body shots with some right uppercuts when he had me up against the rope. And I just think he had a tremendous poker face. And I just, like I said, I need to acknowledge that if I'm hitting these guys, they might not show me that they feel it because we world-class fighters. But I need to have faith in myself and understand that they did feel it and give it right back. How about your body? Can you talk about the Luis Palazzo, Sean Porter body shots? Oh yeah, Luis Palazzo, way, that thing, that thing, that's way worse. Way worse than uh, what Sean hit me with. And really, when I was backpedaling on Sean, I wasn't backpedaling because I was in pain, but because I saw he did one of these things, you know? He like, boom, he landed it, and I could see his weight move forward. I knew he was about to do this. And then after he did that, he just happened to do this. Uh -huh. and, and he ran me down. And he ran me down, you know? And, and I was trying to get away, and it wasn't easy to get away, you know? Of course, on TV, it looked pretty nasty, but it wasn't that bad, it wasn't that bad at all, you know? I mean, it was a, it was a clean shot. I felt it when it landed, and I tried to acknowledge it by backing up. And then I saw him try to come at me, so I tried to back up. And I, you know, I, I probably should have held my ground because I thought I was gonna create distance, but he stayed on me, I couldn't create no distance. So I should have just planted myself, let him smother himself, boom, boom, and then, you know, then readjust. And I would have got the space that I wanted, but I thought I could move into that position. 
and I was unable to for those uh, 12 to 15 seconds. You're in tremendous shape. This is a hell of a media workout. Well, first off, this isn't a media workout. This is me working out with me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different, actually. You know what I'm saying? What, what am I supposed to do? Do a 20-minute workout and then go back to the hotel and then do a real workout today? I don't got time for that. You put me in the ring. You put me in the gym. This is where I live, baby. This is my work for today. And my work in today. to get some emails tonight. <laughs>
Is there a punishment if you mess up on the rope? Do you punish yourself? He ain't messed up yet. Huh? Oh, he did. Did you get a contract from Eddie Hearn? Look, he wanted to talk to me. And it's not that I didn't want to talk to him, but I didn't want to talk to him because I wasn't helping him. Why am I going to talk to you and talk about my future when I don't even really know my future right now? You know? I just, I just was not in the mood to uh, open up that door. You know? If he comes out in the game with something really special, what it is. You know, I'm always down to negotiate. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not hard pressed right now, but I love what I've been doing, and it's an honor to be working with Fox. It's a pleasure to be back in Brooklyn and to showcase my skills and my talent once again to the fight fans in the world of boxing. Talk about your relationship with Al Heyman since, since we missed it. I mean, Al Heyman is a tremendous man. He's a great man. A lot of people said this and that about him, but he put up, he's negotiated many different kind of contracts for many different kind of fighters. Uh, well, uh, uh, Danny Jacobs was on HBO. Nobody thought that was gonna happen, you know? Uh, I, I'm pretty sure he's still working with Amir Khan. And, uh, I don't know if Amir Khan is with 
to soak or not, but uh, at the end of the day, Al Hamid is just a, a great man, a smart man, and he does his best to represent his fighters as individuals. And I'm grateful to be a part of Team Hamid. I feel like my dreams are coming true. All this hard work and dedication from the age of seven to the age of 30 now. I feel like, you know, this is just a beautiful time to be keeping on top down. And it's up to me to live up to the hype of what kind of champion I truly am. And that's what I'm going to be doing. So I need to what was your toughest? Hey, baby, tune in. What was your toughest fight of your career? Uh, you know, I had to dig deep. I had to dig deep. What does dig deep mean to Keith Thurman? What does that mean? Well, in the eighth round, I knew the fight was a draw. You knew it was a draw? I knew it was a draw. It was in my gut. I knew it was a draw. So, I told myself, after the eighth round, this ain't a 12-round fight. This is a four-round fight, baby. And Sean Porter ain't beating me. I can get a draw tonight. Like, did nobody come here to see me get a draw? And I didn't work hard to get a draw. Let's box hard, let's box smart, and let's be champion by the end of the night. And that's what it meant to dig deep for me. I had to go in myself, tell myself that, while my coach was working with me. He was telling me what to do in the corner, and I just had to execute. Well, Keith, what got you in the world of boxing, man? The first day you walked into the gym. You remember that first day? Yeah, it wasn't the gym, it was the elementary. You know? And I ain't know nothing about boxing. I just know I wanted to be a fighter. Yeah, that was for the jump rope. That was for the, was for the jump rope. He on weight, though. You see that? He ain't making weight over here. He already made weight. You can see that. Thank you, Thank King. You. Hall of Fame media workout, King. Hall of Fame Hall media of workout. Damn right. Great media workout. Thank you. Best one I've ever seen in this fucking game for 15 years. 15 years I've seen shit like that, though. Yeah. That's the best shit. Your energy is needed in the welterweight division, you, man. You ever heard anybody talk to a, a, a workout like Yo, that? Yo, that was a whole hour. <laughs> that was a whole hour, yeah. And working. And working. Yeah. <laughs> I told Brad and Sims, I told him, I said, I said, I said I'm here from, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my workout. I said, y'all got me working today? Because I need a workout today, so I'm doing my workout. You got me on the shit, I'm doing my workout. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care if I was in here with, if I needed to make weight and I was in a sweatsuit, be like, oh, you worried about weight? Check, no, but I'm getting my work in, no matter what, I'm working. I'm going to go in the back. What's camp like the last two days? Last two days? I mean, not camp, but like leading into the fight. Uh, what's Keith Thurman doing? You're already on weight. You said you're 149 Monday, so yeah. you just missed one meal and you're at 147. Yeah. Yeah, so what's the, so what's the goal now? Is it tape or is it meditating? 
just gotta be in the right headspace. Um, yeah, visualize victory, baby. This is, you know, we visualizing what's happening Saturday night, and we're gonna do our best to replicate what we have in our mind in real life. Thank you, Keith. Now I can take some water. <laughs> <laughs>